Welcome artistic subscribers and visitors to Monet Cafe. Today I'm continuing the beginner series and I'm going to talk a little bit about water and reflections but you know I usually go into a lot more instruction. And you may know from some of my recent videos that I have started a Patreon page or account and I am so grateful to each and every one of you who has become one of my patrons. You're allowing me to continue these free videos that I offer on Monet Cafe YouTube channel and also I try to give you a little bit of something extra in the patreon group so if you would like to join that group as little as five dollars a month you can become one of my patrons and join our special little family on patreon I'm using again the watercolor pencils but again I'll talk more about how you can use anything for this particular type of underpainting that I'm doing once again I'm using a piece of you art sanded pastel paper I love this paper. It's one of my favorite sanded papers. Notice up in the picture you can see there, there's various grades or grits of sandedness, kind of like sandpaper in the hardware store. My favorite is 400 grade and uh, I just find it's very versatile. Now if you're just getting started in soft pastels, I know some of these products can get expensive. So this is a little clip of one of my videos that I made pretty recently called Eight Ways to Make Your Own Pastel Surfaces. I go over eight different techniques that you can use to make your own surfaces and a couple of them are very affordable, especially the one using watercolor paper and clear gesso. So just uh, check that out if you'd like to find some money saving tips on creating your own paper. Once again, I am using watercolor pencils and these are pencils that I got complimentary from Arteza and they work great, but I have so many different underpainting techniques that you can use and actually I wanted to show you on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel. If you click that little part there that I'm pointing at playlists, I have them organized, my videos organized in categories and I have one called underpainting techniques. If you click it, a video will pop up but to the right of the video like where I have zoomed in there, uh, you can see all of the different videos that I have categorized for different underpainting techniques. So you don't have to use the color, watercolor pencils. Um, there are many different options. Here is the reference photo I'm using and I actually took this photo from uh, a friend's boat while I was in Crystal River, Florida. Oh, it's such a beautiful place. And it's known for being able to see um, uh, underwater creatures called manatees. They're mammals, but they're also called sea cows. If you've ever seen a manatee, they are just the most unique and beautiful and interesting creatures. So I really, really enjoy whenever I get the opportunity to see them. All right, let's get started. Now for this tutorial, I did not include the sketching part or that little value study that you see down to the bottom right. But you can go back to the very first in these, these beginner series and you can see where I create these value studies and it is of a great value to do these value studies. So check that video out if you can. And some of you have asked which markers am I using when I create these value studies. Sometimes I use pencil or charcoal, but I actually was using some markers I was not that happy with. And I have just recently bought these markers on Amazon called Tombow Dual Brush Pens. Now I haven't received them yet, but from what I've heard, they're really good for doing these little notans or value studies. Okay, so I have sped this underpainting um, part of the video up just a tad and because you know if you've looked at any of the ones previous to this you get the idea what i in the sketch i sketched out those clouds and now i'm kind of working that medium value uh, almost like a pink a purplish pink tone uh, around the clouds and uh, again you can go back to the other videos and watch these but um, i'm keeping a um, directional type of uh, strokes uh, and even though I'm going to be putting alcohol with a brush over this, which will kind of blend all this out anyway, this is just kind of my method of operation is kind of working in, with a sketcherly quality when I work. Now I'm adding a little bit of a lighter pink there. They're going to kind of blend together when I add the uh, alcohol to this. And again, I get questions all the time. Uh, well, I just got a question actually in one of the videos what's the difference between um, a, a sanded paper that allows water, a wet sanded paper, or a dry sanded paper. And um, if you like wet underpaintings, you need a sanded paper that will allow water. 
and UART paper does. There are some sanded pastel papers that don't allow water, such as Sennelier Le Carte. Um, I happen to love that paper, but you have to, you know, do a different underpainting technique with that rather than one with water. Now, I'm going in with this a little bit of a darker value um, for those trees. As we know, things that are vertical, perpendicular to the horizon are going to be a little darker in value. So, but the ones I did just before this one were the ones that are kind of behind those pine trees. So, or pine trees, palm trees. And now I'm doing um, the palm trees in front of it with a maybe a tad darker value and warmer because they're a little closer and so really with palm trees you it, it, when they're this far away you do not have to give all of the individual palm fronds if you look at the reference photo you can't see all those palm fronds they're just kind of shapes but i've lived in florida for so long i it's easy for me to identify palm trees and uh, you just have to give you know a little bit of a a wispy shape at the top um, and long, obviously, trunks to make it appear to be a palm tree. All right, I'm going to work a little bit more here. And um, just keep in mind that when I get to the pastel part, oh, that's just the darker, the darkest that I'm using there. When I get to the pastel part, it's going to be real time. And uh, you will be able to see all of the pastel application in regular time. where I am going to start applying the alcohol to the colored pencil and I'm using the 70 isopropyl alcohol uh, it's not quite as strong smelling as the 90 or 91 percent whatever it is now this is going to be interesting I was actually trying to do a little iPhone video of myself doing this while um, doing the uh, alcohol application to the underpainting. That is actually really hard to do. <laughs> so if you can do that, bravo. I was finding it, you know, a little bit challenging. But anyway, so all I'm doing, as you can see, it's my normal strategy of kind of working top to bottom. Uh, even though uh, I'm kind of getting rid of the, the stroke work, I'm still moving in the same direction as those strokes when I apply the alcohol with the brush. So I'm still keeping that directional quality of the sky. And again, let the drips happen. It's fine. I try not to let mine get so drippy that it's just all over the paper, but um, you know, it's okay if it drips around a little bit. It just really helps to make, give that soft impressionistic painterly feel to your work. All right, let me continue with this. Again, if you've watched these beginner videos, you've seen me do this like uh, four times now, five times now. And uh, just so you know, I did about six paintings in one day. That's why all of these have the watercolor pencils that I'm using because it was just fast. But again, if you go back and watch the other underpainting technique videos that I have, uh, you can do this with pastel instead of the watercolor pencil. If you have some harder pastels, that'd be the best ones to use. Um, you can do the same thing. All you need really is a dark, medium and lighter value um, color or value uh, pastel to use and you can create an underpainting then you can apply over the pastel the alcohol or water just like i'm doing here 
it really kind of works the same again if you're using watercolor paper to do one of the homemade surfaces that i have you can do a watercolor underpainting all you're really trying to do with an underpainting is cover your entire surface keeping it loose keeping it keeping it moody and you have some choices you can do um, a color underpainting that is the colors are complementary to your painting um, you can just kind of have fun and get creative um, kind of like I did here I decided a lot of times I'll do a warm underpainting where I use mostly reds oranges and yellows this one was um, leaning a little bit more towards the cooler side uh, but it's still the the warmer purples as you can see pinks and purples and um, so that's kind of um, what I was focusing on with this I, I really wanted to in spite of the reference photo being more of a daytime scene I kind of wanted to get that um, that typical or typical to me because I see it all the time Florida you know sun setting scene where the skies are just pink and beautiful and uh, so that was my goal and my reasoning for picking this particular color for underpainting all right so now I'm keeping it loose still I'm just kind of uh, dabbing the alcohol on these palm frond Im, you know impressions of the palm trees and uh, just keeping it real loose and you see by the time this is done it just has a a really nice painterly look before you actually start applying the pastel all right let me finish this up the pastels I'm using and I apologize that I am doing this footage after I created the painting um, but I'm, I'm just organizing them here so you can kind of uh, see them better and all those little round ones that I'm sorting right now those are all of the Giro pastels I recently did a video uh, like reviewing that product Giro pastels are made in France and uh, they this particular set is the Elizabeth Maori poetic landscape set i love it it's really great um those square ones there the biggest square one those are going to be your terry ludwigs i've got a combination some of those are unison some may be sennelier and i am going to try to start sharing more in my videos the variety of pastels that i'm using all right time to paint now that the uh, water uh, alcohol actually is dry and uh, i have my nice warm pinkish purpley underpainting I'm going to start applying the pastels. I wanted to go ahead and establish the lightest light, which is in those clouds. And I'm going to keep the clouds um, more impressionistic and not make them uh, the star <clears throat> or so dramatic that it steals away from the palms and the reflection in the water. Um, so this is where I'm just kind of laying down color and you know I had a great question by someone in our patreon group who wanted to know more about keeping a loose and painterly um, impression in your painting or uh, effect in your artwork and that's another neat thing about the patreon group is I'm gonna be able to answer more of your questions more specifically and uh, it's a little more intimate anyway because there's right now currently there's less than a hundred uh, patrons in the group so and we have a, a corresponding Facebook group. It's a private group that only my patrons are a part of, so we have more communication there. Um, but anyway, so this particular person was wanting some advice on a painterly look and not getting too detailed too quickly. And um, I, I sent back a list of some of those things, and I realized that'd be a good video to do. But one of the recommendations was to work all over your painting for before you get too bogged down in one area. I've seen people who can actually create a painting and they start in one corner or one part of the painting and they they make it finished before they move to the next little section and they they create a detailed painting in little sections at a time and if you want a more and i'm fascinated by how people can do that but it typically does result in a more tight or detailed painting final painting uh, and if you want a more impressionistic uh, painterly feel it is best to work all over the whole painting one of the things that does help that is an underpainting that's something I could add to the list of what helps create an impressionistic look or feel and doing an underpainting definitely helps that but again working all over the entire painting getting 
the basics down first before getting so detailed in any one area. I find it also helps me to establish my uh, values more accurately when I get in uh, my lightest lights and my darkest darks before um, just getting too tedious about any one area of the painting. Okay, so you can see now I've added in some of the warmer tones, even warmer than that pink. I had I had more of the, the pinker tones in the sky and now I've added a little warmer um, tones in between those clouds and gradually I've shared this in multiple videos gradually in a sky or typically in most skies you go from darker values up top in the horizon upper horizon down to lighter values as it approaches the horizon and also typically it goes from cooler temperatures in the upper horizon down to warmer temperatures that's a general rule of thumb. I know sometimes skies can be different, um, so you know, but that's that's something to keep in mind. I apologize if you're hearing a loud humming while I'm making this video. Guess what we're doing? We're preparing for another hurricane. I know my longtime subscribers on here. I felt like I have worn y'all out with talking about how we got flooded during Hurricane Irma. And we had to move. We had to live in a travel trailer. We had to try to renovate that home and sell it because we didn't want to be in this position again, having to worry about our home flooding. It, it's a lot. If you, I had never been through a flood before. You think it's just water coming in your house. Uh, you forget that it's nasty water coming in your house. And in Florida, there can be gators and snakes and all kinds of debris that's disgusting. So I, I really was just amazed at the how bad it smelled and all the cleanup so anyway not to get into that but we didn't want to do that again so we we renovated and sold that home and now I find myself praying for the owners who bought the home that we sold because right now if we get another large dumping of rain it's not the winds we're worried about right now it's the rain it could it could be another flooding situation and with the river breaching that's that's the issue with the house that we sold so we're on high ground now I'm not worried about that but I am concerned about our community and we do have some other things we need to prep for so welcome to Florida right <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful but we do have to deal with hurricanes once in a while all right so now uh, you can see I'm just kind of working on the sky and in looking at this uh, after the fact that I painted it I, I probably should have gone ahead and moved on and I probably will right now move on to start working the whole painting like I was talking about oh and that's exactly what I'm doing right now um, what I'm doing now is is just getting in some of the basic general uh, tone or value and color of the water. I'm probably pausing right there to um, kind of make my pastel a little more smooth. Oh, I, I lightened the value. See the two different uh, pastels in my hand? I decided I wanted the value a little lighter in that water. And notice I'm making, I'm keeping a very light touch, especially when I got to that background water. It's more of a glazing instead of a pressing really hard. So it's just a light touch just to get a general value of that water in. And it's okay if that underpainting is peeking through right there. All right, now I got a little bit of a darker value. And what I'm doing now is I'm getting some of the shadowy areas from the reflections of the bank um, uh, of, that those trees are resting on. And then the next thing about water and reflections is we want to uh, fairly quickly before we move on to anything else um, kind of what I'm doing here I'm getting a little bit more of the the bank the darker areas by the shore but fairly quickly you want to get in the um, shadows from or shadow well, they are kind of like shadows in the water the reflection of those palm trees now in my reference photo I didn't really see the reflections all that much because I was kind of far away and the water was a little choppy um, but I, I wanted that effect so I am actually going to add the reflections but now I'm getting in just some of the darker um, tones of the water letting some of that lighter periwinkle blue kind of peek through that and because we know values are typically darker in the foreground and lighter in the background that's why those the, the river or it's not a river it's more of a well it is kind of a river that's going way back in the distance to the right those are going to be lighter values not only are they further away they're closer to the source of light the sun um, now i'm just adding some of the cooler purpley shadowy areas in those trees again i'm, I'm creating um i don't know more of a sunset feel to this 
and cooler colors and purples and blues always recede or they they push back in the painting so I wanted them to uh, be kind of whatever background foliage is behind those palm trees and then I'll add the darks uh, of the palm trees will be the darkest dark so that's kind of why I haven't really put down my reflections yet because they're going to be when I finally put in the the darkest dark which is those palm trees I got a little bit of that that blue that I said is the background foliage some of that's already reflected in the water that I've laid down all right now I'm getting my darkest dark for the palms that will they dark values come forward so they will be the um, closer uh, elements in the uh, the landscape there so I'm just gonna work on these and then I will be right back to talk to you about the reflections Okay, so now it is time to get to these reflections. I've got my darkest dark in the trees. I've already got some of those um, background colors kind of in the water. And all I'm doing now is emulating the shadows or the um, reflections from the trees into the water. And it's basically a mirror image. If I was to turn this painting or my easel board um, up on its side, in other words, turn it clockwise, um, to 90 degrees left or right um, it would have the same mirror image on one side and the other so sometimes artists have actually done that you know to get it right the more you do it the more you kind of just do it by um, habit <laughs> but um, that's a neat little trick to kind of turn it on its side and look to make sure you have a mirror image so that's all I'm doing and I'm doing a, a little bit of it to those trees but I realized those reflections don't need to be as dark as these foreground reflections because they are further away so now I'm just adding some of the other um, I think that's a, a duller gray color in there and um, this is all going to get kind of covered up and blended by glazing over it you'll see later but for the first initial part of the reflection well let me go over these again first you get your base watercolor down you keep it very gentle you float not a heart don't press hard you do it in um, horizontal bands just like the water would be flowing then you add your reflections from the trees and in this case that I'm doing here I'm making the reflections lighter in value a little cooler back there because they're far away I'm, I don't use my fingers a lot but sometimes I will like I just kind of softened that up a little bit and um, then oh I actually have already added a little bit of a, a dull green in those trees the foreground palm trees that you can't see it real good in the video but that's the other color that I added there now I want to go ahead I am gonna get some of the um, blue in the sky here so I want to go ahead again trying to work on the whole um, painting uh, I want to not get too uh, stuck on any one area so I'm adding in some of the cooler blues and uh, then we'll get uh, back to the water again in a minute. So I'll be back when I get to more water and reflections. Mm -hmm.
now that I've added a little bit of the warmer colors to the trees, I need to remember to emulate that or carry it through into the water and the reflection. So uh, again, I've already laid down the darkest dark in the reflections and whatever I add to the trees, I want to just pull it down into um, or onto what I've already added. So you see how that, if you squint your eyes, you see how that's already giving that indication of, uh, of trees reflected in the water. Now, um, I'll continue this and then I will come back in when I start to glaze over this. So enjoy and I'll be back in a minute.
now at this point I have pretty much things established and it's time to do that glazing or um, sheen kind of that's over the water uh, and again my water is going to be calm whereas the water in the reference photo was a little bit more choppy but as you can see I'm not covering up everything that I've put down I'm just lightly glazing over now the background color I used was a lighter value because the Sun is reflecting in that and also it's further back so I'm gradually um, getting my values darker as I move forward into this just because this of this particular reference photo and how the light is um, there's going to be less of that light color on top of those palm tree reflections because the Sun is behind it instead of uh, shining down on top of it now another good thing to do with water is whatever's in the sky does get reflected into the water and I've got some of those pinks in the sky and it's going to just pull the painting all together better if I let the water reflect what's in the sky because that's what it does in nature so again I've given some slight glazing of lighter values in the back real lightly letting the colors show through that were underneath gradually um, moving forward getting them a little darker and um, now I'm going even darker over there on that side um, because it actually in the reference photo and I apologize you can't see the reference photo very good in this one because of how I had the the camera set up but it was darker on that lower left side I apologize I lost a little clip of footage there but now I'm going in and adding some of those lines that um, you get like where the water breaks a little bit and uh, often in water you can see those uh, little light colored bands and I also like to get it where the water might be breaking a little bit on the shore so I just add a little highlight and you never want these to be a, a straight line across you want to break it up vary the pressure a little bit and uh, and and just keep giving those directional lines kind of just exactly how the water would lay on a flat surface like that and um, so this is pretty much it um, I I hope I gave you guys a good idea as to how to do reflections they they're pretty standard in how they work that's the good thing as long as you reflect what above put it down below make it more of a mirror image and uh, then just lightly glaze over it following the general rules of value and color all right so I'm gonna finish this one up and then I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys the final and I hope you learned a lot about doing reflections and I'll try to do more and don't forget I'm gonna keep these free videos coming on YouTube even though I have a patreon account now um, you guys just get excited knowing that uh, I will never stop bringing these as long as I am physically able to do so. All right, guys. So thanks so much for joining me today and blessings. And I'll probably be with you uh, for another video after this hurricane passes. All right. So prayers appreciated. Thanks, guys. And happy painting.